We need to make cars smaller. And this North American trend of larger car models year after year is not just bad for the environment. It also makes our cities far less comfortable and livable for everyone. Now, I've spent time in many places across the world, both loud and quiet, urban and rural. And it's pretty consistent that the loudest places are always those near a busy street or road. When I visited Athens, I stayed in the very center of the city. At first, I thought it would be really loud at night, but my hotel was on a pedestrian-only street, and it was shockingly still at night. Like, quieter than the neighborhood I grew up in, in the suburbs of Colorado. As the saying goes, cities aren't loud, cars are, but there is a range to that. On average, though, Larger cars are heavier, therefore requiring stronger engines, which make them louder. Just to clarify, I mean your average, fresh off the production line, small car, not race cars or any modified vehicle. Some people modify their cars to make them louder, which I don't understand, but that's a topic for another video. When factoring in electric cars, which produce far less sound than gas cars on average, it is possible to make a near-silent vehicle, which would make our cities exponentially quieter if they were the standard. Though the main issue with electric cars is that the lithium batteries they require are really heavy and are both more expensive and more environmentally impactful to produce the larger they get. This is why, despite what Elon Musk would like you to think, electric semis will never be financially nor logistically feasible. Therefore, the most optimal vehicles to reduce both climate damage and noise pollution are smaller sized electric or hybrid cars. Enter the microcar. There are several models, but today I will focus on the one I see most here in Portugal. Say hello to the Citroën Ami, an electric microcar that is, in my opinion, a shining example of what the car of the future should be. It's so small that it isn't even legally classified as a car in most territories, instead a quadricycle, and can be charged with a normal wall outlet. It may be small, but it is a great little car for single-person trips, or even two-person trips, since it seats up to two people. But you may be asking, why would a two-seat Ami be perfect for the majority of car trips worldwide? Well. Research group Mobility Lab states that about 85% of cars on the road in the U.S. contain only one person, and a majority of the remaining cars contain just two people. If over 90% of cars on the road only contain one or two occupants, then why are the vast majority of modern cars built to hold five plus people? It's inefficient and a waste of space. Mobility Lab states that this problem could be solved by getting more people to carpool, filling the empty seats in those cars on the road. But I believe this isn't likely to happen, as I know from experience that carpooling is often a hassle when trying to match up everyone's schedule and routine for the day, kind of like taking the metro, but worse, and in a car. Instead, if we just made more smaller car models, it would be a better utilization of space on the road as well as a huge help in reducing noise pollution. And people would buy these smaller cars because there are so many reasons why a smaller car is better for the driver. First, data shows that over 60% of drives commuters in the US make are six miles or less in total distance, and less than 5% are greater than 30 miles. The average microcar may not have as many comfortability features and maybe not as comfortable seats as a large, suburban-type SUV, but I believe that many commuters would be willing to sacrifice some comfortability in order to gain massive improvements of efficiency and affordability, especially if a majority are spending less than 10 minutes in their car at a time. Look, cars are expensive. That's just an objective fact. Even if a driver can afford to have a car and not go into debt, which not everyone can, they'd still want to minimize costs. Drivers could save thousands every year by switching from a massive gas hog to a small microcar, 
not to mention the environmental and noise reduction benefits. There's also the obvious incentive that small cars can fit into smaller parking spaces, making parking far easier in large, densely populated cities. Additionally, microcars like the Ami are highly agile and maneuverable, giving their driver exceptional movement control. This is perfect for me because I hate driving large, unwieldy cars, but I find golf carts really fun and easy to use. Golf carts count as a microcar, right? Whatever. Peachtree City in the state of Georgia has a massive network of golf cart streets and people there prefer them over normal cars because the smaller vehicle is far easier and cheaper to drive in almost every case. Reducing the carbon output of our vehicles will also help avoid an impending climate catastrophe. Sure, cars don't contribute 100% to environmental pollution, but they do contribute a significant amount, over 15% according to this chart. Therefore, the evidence shows that larger cars are really only necessary for carrying large loads or occasionally for carrying large amounts of people. Pickups and semi-trucks will always have their purpose, but even in the commercial and shipping world, it is common to see smaller vehicles. For example, U.S. Postal Service trucks are smaller than a majority of the cars you see on the road nowadays, showing that smaller vehicles are more practical once again. Take a look at the Minimax Cubo, a micro truck by Italian manufacturer Tazari. This little thing can do almost everything a modern F-150 type truck can do, yet it's less than a quarter the size. And for those saying that large cars are still necessary for taking kids to school, I present the four-door smart car, because we all know that kids had no way of getting to school before cars were a thing. All right, there are still some cases where a large, roomy car would be better, but these cases are invariably quite rare. Larger cars are more comfortable for long-distance road trips, but people very rarely take road trips and might as well just rent a car when they go on one. Large cars can also help with moving large items, which the average person does rather infrequently. Once again, it would be better to rent a U-Haul or pickup to accomplish this one in a thousand scenario. Oh, but I need my massive three-ton tank because I go camping once a year. Again, Smaller cars can do a lot more than most people think. It's also pretty clear to see that getting hit by this is far less likely to kill you than this. Reducing the average car size would massively increase safety for both the driver and everyone around them. This change would make biking and walking much more desirable activities. I believe that many people in North America live within walking or biking distance of several things but still drive because they fear being game-ended by some moron in a Ram 2500 XL Child Killer Turbo. And that is a more valid concern people have regarding smaller cars. The fear of sharing the road with large cars. I think this could be fixed by making dedicated areas for small cars only, and by slowly phasing out use of larger cars by use of tax law changes, parking restrictions, and subsidizing large vehicle rentals. Installing regulation of non-commercial vehicle size would undoubtedly face backlash, and sure, not everyone wants a smaller car. Some people enjoy their large vehicle for personal reasons, and that's fine. However, a person's enjoyment of something does not allow them to use that thing whenever and wherever. Tank enthusiasts can't just drive a T-31 to the store, nor would they want to, as that would be dangerous and just plain ridiculous. Larger cars and pickups in North America have far less visibility and are harder to control due to their massive weight and size, making them much more likely to be in a collision than normal cars. In the end, if cars are to remain the transit standard for the time being, we should work to make them as efficient, safe, environmentally friendly, and usable as possible. We should also account for the perspectives of both those in and outside the car and find the solution that is most optimal for everyone. Reducing the size of our cars will make our cities just that much safer, quieter, and so much more. In other words, make the cars smaller. It's just better that way. <laughs>